<laughs> Everybody turn off your phones. No, don't you. No, don't you. Just us. <laughs> Welcome to Side Dish, everybody. I'm Doug, and uh, we are, um, you know, trying to make this work today, as always. Um, so we wanted something simple. I had to golf today, so I was up at 6 o'clock-ish. And um, so we're making cold cannon, which is an Irish mashed potato and uh, greens, which is usually cabbage. Because if, if you think of anything about the Irish, it's boiled vegetables mixed together and and made edible. So that's not the case with this. It's actually looks pretty damn good. Delicious. Yeah. So we are going to make that. And hi, Ping. And we are, it's pretty simple. And we're making an amaretto whiskey sour, which, I mean, why not? What it, oh, that's a fly. I thought the fly was inside of the light. It's not. It's right here. Anyways, but before we we got a lot to do. Not really. Okay, so I got two types of potatoes. I've got golden and I've got russet. And you need three large of these. And if you can find larger ones of these, which I couldn't, so you need three large of these. And Yukon we have, gold. Yukon gold. Yes, thank you. So I found smaller ones, and so I we have ten of them, and that should make enough. We'll be fine. It'll be fine. Jeez. Amy's giving me a look like that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Here, whatever, here we are. Um, we're making standard, well, we're not making our standard mashed potatoes because we're not going to rice them. But, uh, you know, we've got a masher. I'm going to get the masher because we need that. Nope. It's over here. And it looks like every other masher that's been in that kitchen for the last hundred years. <laughs> a plain white handle or decorative would be flowered inside of it, mm -hmm. and but it looks exactly like this. And if it doesn't, it's not. You can also, if you're into, um, you know, you can brand a cow with it too and have your own marker. So, anyways, but we're not suggesting that. What? Don't. <clears throat> Whoa. Besides the recipes, don't do anything I suggest. <laughs> Except for the Except for maybe the, the media uh, yeah. recommendation. That's true. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, oh, Patton Oswald has a new uh, comedy special out. It's pretty good. Um, you watched it already? Yeah. I watched it at work because, you know, I'll watch it again. Um, what Amy's been watching MASH like a crazy person uh, <laughs> because it's the 50th anniversary of MASH. So, and Hulu has them all. So we've been watching that. What else has happened? Thanks, Danny, for the Hulu subscription. Yep. Um, <clears throat> we, I don't know, we've been kind of busy. Um, I don't know. Carmen passed her permit test. That's right. Last Saturday. Got it. It came today. Yesterday. Yesterday. Well, you were. Carmen's a little bit under the weather today and yesterday. So Carmen drove us home on Thursday? We did a fine, fine job. We have a magnetic sticker that was in our in our friend Andrew Lino's garage that says student driver. So we just stick it to the back of the car when she's driving. So that's fun. Um, I think it helps people have a little more patience. I think so. I'm going to leave it up all the time. <laughs> I get one of those. I, we've got a bowl. I've already, uh, Denise was so kind to already do some of these. So I'm just, I mean, we got them in water so they don't brown. Because the oxidation, it's a science term, uh, <laughs> will cause the potatoes to go brown, much like apples or any other uh, sort of white or beige vegetable type fruit, fruit. thing. Anyways, uh, we hit the vernal equinox, which is uh, we're officially in fall. Uh, I'm excited about that because the weather has gotten much cooler. Um, except for today, it was 85 degrees, and you know, hence the <laughs> rosy complexion. <laughs> I'm not trying out for Santa Claus later. So, um, yeah, it was otherwise kind of a. We had a nice dinner last night with our Andrew and you know their their sets of parents. Um, that was really fun. I made ribs on the smoker and. 
They were amazing. Uh, I'm getting really good at it. So <clears throat> if you guys, uh, anybody wants to come by and have ribs, you let me know. Just do it ahead of time so I know what to do. We had a little debate in the store about which ribs to buy. You definitely bought the right one. Yeah. So there's so there's St. Louis style ribs, short ribs, and then there are no spare ribs, and then there are short ribs. The short ribs come from the upper part of the rib cage. Yes, the upper part would be over here, according on a cow. So, and then the lower part, which is near the belly. As about the cow, it's pig. Sorry, is more meat. Uh, the lower is lower part is more meaty, and it has um, just has more a little bit more fat, a little bit more, and up here is more trim and um, tender. So it's uh, you know up here when you're getting close to the middle of the back, that's where the tender line is. So you know a lot more movement, a lot more tender. Yes. If you don't know, that's right. <laughs> and if you do know, don't say anything. That makes sense. The ribs were amazing. Yeah. The ribs were amazing. Um, that, yeah. They were really, really, really good. I I changed up their, so I use a method that's called the 3 2 1 rib, which is you, you dry rub them, put them on 200 to 180 degree oven, and then you, you do that until for three hours. Take them off, wrap them in tin foil, add a little either apple juice, or brown sugar, and then you wrap them in the tin foil and you uh, go from there. So I'm going to chop these potatoes up because we need to get them in the boil in the boiling water. So I'm just going to do this standardly. I uh, still have a glove on. I'm Michael Jackson did it today instead of having two gloves um, because it's almost healed, but not quite. It looks it, it still looks like I, there's a chunk going, but it's it's rapidly healed. Like Wolverine, but just at normal speed. So, so not at all, right? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna let me get this. this. Not here, like that. That seems weird. But I'm gonna put them in here because I don't like we do with mashed potatoes. We do not want we want the potatoes in, and then we're gonna fill them up with water, add some salt. But we don't want to go very much above the potatoes because we don't want them to get too soggy. And you can combat that by not having a ton of water over the top. So, yeah, if you didn't know that, you're welcome. <clears throat> What's been up with you? You took Friday off because you got some blood drawn? Yeah, I got some blood drawn and I decided that when that happens to you. You don't have to go to work? You don't have to go to work. Yeah, yeah. Back to two days at home now that the first part of the school year at the university is done. So my routine is Back to normal. normal. And I gotta tell you, it really makes a difference in my mood. Anyways, got that going on. Hey, are you in my kitchen? I was trying to sniff the broth we're gonna have for dinner. So, <clears throat> so these are gonna um, boil down, and then once we do that, we'll, then the real fun starts. Man, this, Whoa. This guy is a little bit squirrely. I did not watch this. You're fine. Cut your thumb off. I won't. <laughs> I'm, I'm acutely aware of it for a while, and then I'll forget again and cut my cut it again. We have to put all stuff on it again, and we'll go to the hospital. One of the two, as long as it's not Thanksgiving. <laughs> we had to go get stitches on Thanksgiving once, and then come back and finish the meal. <laughs> they didn't stitch you though; they just super glued it. You split it open by the time we got home. Yep, that's true. So that was a waste. Man down. When I say super glue, are you just putting regular super glue? It, it is literally a super glue. But it's, they they charge you for it. Like it's not. It's medical super grade super glue. <laughs> which is not much better than just super glue. I don't really know that there's any difference. I don't think there's a difference. That's what they get you. Um, if you know of any difference, then that's good. So, getting into winter, fall, fall. holidays. Coming up is uh, where we at uh, Halloween. That's gonna be uh, fun. What are you gonna be for Halloween? Uh, Yourself? I don't know. I got this hair, so I gotta decide to do something. You could with be it. a vampire. I could. You could be the scientist from Back to the Future. Yeah. His name is Dr. Emmett Brown. 
You can poop your hair out. He's you can be a disgraced nuclear physicist. You could be Rick. You could be Rick. Oh my and god! You could be Morty. You could be Morty. That would be fun. Only <laughs> if I get to dye my hair. Actually, Why? brown. Do it. I'll, I'll dye. My, we'll get that fake blue dye for my hair. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Okay. And is that, I, the only thing I have to do is just get drunk to play the part. So I'm in. <laughs> Gross. Uh-oh. Potato down. Um, Doc gives a recipe. No. Anyways, this is exciting, but it's not that hard. I mean, we're 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 gonna boil some potatoes. We're gonna fry up. Oh, this is homemade bacon. Look, at, I wanted to show you how good that looks. Come on, it's so good. I don't, I've got enough homemade bacon in my freezer that I don't have to buy it ever again. That's not true. I got only about 50, <laughs> I only have about fifty. What? I only have about eight, ten, <laughs> ten pounds of that, something like that. So. Plus, Eric votes for you being the crow. The crow. <laughs> what year is it for you, Eric? <laughs> I was gonna say that's a that's cool. It is. <laughs> um, it's like nineteen ninety two. Always for Eric. <laughs> Uh, I got a text from Danny today that said, uh, "Now I under now understand your love for your your supermarket." And I said, "Nobody listens to me. I've been saying it for years." And he goes, "We got this one that we go into, and it's got what a burger. It's got this. It's got that." And I was like, well, "Sounds sounds complicated to me, but whatever." No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I didn't say, that. but I was you know I have a love of Grocery store. We went. We went to the store yesterday. Amy went to the grocery store with me, which is never, never happens. I did, and the whole time we were in there, Doug kept looking at me like, "This is why I don't take you to the grocery store because you come home with three pounds of lemon drops, and <laughs> that's what those are." She asked yes, me, and they're not for you. She asked me, <laughs> "Should we get? We're at Costco," and she's like. Should we get this tomato sauce and our tomato diced tomatoes? And I was like, no, we're fine with that. And then we come home and we have a whole box of it already. She goes, is that why you told me not to? I'm like, yes. You didn't know. Yes, I did know. You lie. I'm the I'm the one who cooks. Of course I know. Anyways. The crow came out in '94. Is that right? Wow, that's crazy. Doesn't seem like that, you know. It also doesn't seem like. 1994 was uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody? Somebody. Okay. So now we can add the water and uh, then we'll salt it. So there's going to be enough um, potatoes to feed an army, but when you're probably an Irish family in the 1800s and all you were eating is potatoes and boiled cabbage, um, and you probably had 15 kids, so that's just like a fact. Gonna do it over there. There's no reason to watch water boil with potatoes in it, so. Oh, my phone is going to liberally salt that. You're not, it's not going to go all the way in there, so. Um, but you will want that the potatoes to be salted. Okay, so we, I, I'm using the cast iron today. Um, and I'm going to fry the bacon in here, and then I'm going to take two tablespoons of butter and add it to some of the fat that's in there. I'm going to drain some of it off. But, and then we're going to have just a flavor bomb of, of deliciousness to work with in this pan. So this, this is where you have to worry about me cutting my finger off because it's kind of floppy meat. So. Yuck. <laughs> I'm doing this, this, you know, so that you can, you can do these in strips or you can do this and get more crispiness because you're going to have more of the surface area mm-hmm. yeah. touching. So, you know, you got to be smart. I sometimes am not, like I didn't turn this off. So we're using, we're using the, uh, the old, uh, the countertop one without the flame because I don't have any gas in the oven, so we work with what we got people I'm looking forward to uh we well, got fall break right in like two weeks one week what 
That's crazy to think about. Mm. Food pusher. So this is going to go, and we're going to chop an onion, chop up some. Uh, we only need half of this cabbage, by the way. But I am going to core it, and then we'll do that because nobody wants that tough part. Now, you're adding because recipes vary, right? Yeah, I mean, so that I was going to say, most recipes are potatoes as a base for the mashed potatoes and some sort of alley. So I saw recipes with onions and garlic and... Um, leeks. I saw some with leeks. I saw some with onions, garlic, and kale. I saw some with onions, garlic, and, you know, and, and the cabbage. There's leeks and all the variations of all of that together. So, you know, you got some room to play here. I'm not really chunking this into small bits. I'm just going to kind of chop it a little bit or uh, slice it. So... And I'm not putting this in yet because I want to. We're going to do the bacon all the way through, and then let it render the fat all the way out of the bacon, crisp up, and then um, we'll add the onions and then this, the garlic. Let that cook a little bit, and then the and then when you're all of that is softening, the sliced and a little bit chopped of the cabbage head goes in here. So cabbage head sounds like an insult. <laughs> And, and you cabbage head. What was, it? what was that one that we were camping, Denise? And I can't remember what it was. Uh, something like you. But it looked, it sounded really bad, but it was like a, something <laughs> bag. I don't remember. But it was hilarious. <laughs> dirty garbage bag or something like that. I don't remember. It'll come to me because I thought of it the other day. Giggled my butt off. <laughs> These, um, this is just a yellow onion. This is going to be uh, chopped. I'm not looking for a dice here, so don't, you know, get too fancy. I don't think that that's the thing. This is going to be a good, this would be a good fall dish. Because you're using some bright green of your cabbage, which is a winter, fall, you know, um, is a breath from the brassica. So you can go all the way into, and they're hard, they're kind of not winter hardy, but they're winter tolerant. So you can, you know, that's like Brussels sprouts, uh, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage, um, cauliflower. They're all brassica. They're all bred from the same ancestor to have different qualities. So like a broccoli rob is bred to have longer, skinnier uh, a, uh, stems. And the cultivated, can we say cultivated? What did I say? Bread. When nah, you say cult- bread, that sounds like animals. You breed plant, plants, I think. You cultivate plants. No, whatever. Sure. It's all, you know, potato, potato. You, you, you cultivate or breed, whatever you like. Um, and um, you get all the different varieties. So, in like broccoli, and cauliflower's case, you get they braid them for the or cultivate them for the uh, <laughs> she winces every time I say it. Like she's like, like, she's like stop saying breed. Um, anyways, they they cultivate them for their uh, flat the flower because those are flowers. They're ready to flower, and they they have a if you let them go, they will produce seed. So, you know. So don't let anybody talks about genetically modified food. I mean, plant breeding has been practiced by farmers since the dawn of agriculture, as the selected plants for larger fruit seeds and more tasty fruits. So, so now look up cultivated and the valuable traits. Both today, farmers and scientists works to breed plants. Find out here in a sec. This is why we have fact checkers on this show. We don't, but Carmen is a fact checker for us. I also saw one that used um, leeks and then finished it with green onions as well. And so that mixed it in like, <clears throat> excuse me. Not when it was cooking, but like when the, everything was warm and mixed together, and it sort of like it cooked them a little bit or steamed them from the heat. So. 
It's the raising of crops, cultivation and agriculture and horticulture, the loosening and breaking up, tilling of the soil, and more generally, the raising of crops. Okay, well, little column A, a little column B. So, are you guys, did anybody do gardening, you know, like, uh, successive gardening, like uh, stuff in the spring that can is heat tolerant or uh, winter or cold tolerant, and then summer crops, then fall crops, and then more, and then over winter stuff. I'm trying to do that more so we get, you know, you're getting things that are supposed to eat during the time that you're supposed to eat them. You, know? so you get a more variety of your food that way, which is kind of fun. Okay, so I've got this. I'm gonna. I don't know if we should have. To do this, so it's not that. It's not that um, special. But I'm not doing it. Usually you can you can pound it up. The ghost didn't like that. We got critters in our backyard. 4 a.m. the other day. Amy uh, wakes, we both wake up and she goes, did you hear that? I'm like, yes. It, it sounds I've like, been up for like an hour listening uh, to it. Sounded like metal clanging in the backyard. And then what, what I thought was weird though is we got up. Not consecutively. Yeah. It would like clang and then it would be quiet for like 10, 15 minutes and then it would do it again. And I heard it like it was pretty consistent, or it was like it was happening when I woke up, it was happening more often. So. I pretty much decided it was an animal out there because we have coyotes, raccoons, rabbits, all kinds of stuff. It's probably a rabbit. I found a rabbit back there eating uh, the pears that dropped on the floor. Um, so. Oh, happened? shoot. Do we need to pull those tomorrow? The, the, I'm going to pull them tomorrow. And pull probably. I don't know how many pounds of jalapenos off as well. So. Jalapeno jelly. Yeah. So this isn't really not the right knife, but I was trying. Oh, here we go. It's a lemon knife. It's a lemon knife. I'm kind of cutting into this at an angle. That's why that's the cleaver won't work. Because you need to get to the kind of the middle here and loosen this up. Because this is a, like a woody stock. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Planting black cherry. They didn't taste as great. Interesting. I find the. I don't really like cherry tomatoes. If I'm gonna grow tomatoes, I'll either grow the small ones. Like the great tomatoes. Yeah, I really just grow like Roma tomatoes a lot because they're the most versatile, and I can get. Um, I can make a lot, you can make diced stewed tomatoes and can them. And um, then you can do whatever you want with them. You can blend them out, make sauce, you, can, you know, you've got all kinds. Okay, so I've taken that out and it kind of, you know, but about what you want. And then. It looks like a bread bowl. <laughs> Those kind of look like a bread bowl. So again, we're only using half of this. And then this will go live over here. He went to a farm. Don't worry. He'll be raised really nice. <laughs> People who care. Yeah. So don't worry. Got my, uh, what is it? Uh, compost pile is smoking hot right now. Well, that's good. I'm get, trying to get ready and start to bed down some of the stuff that we've got planted. Use some stuff. Maybe we'll do a, maybe we'll do a jelly special or something like that. Kind of record the process of making jelly over time. Put it up as a bonus episode. You should write that down for next year. Sweet 100. Yes. A variety I've, to get. We have had, uh, I, I bought those in the past. Oh, they, yeah. They are mm -hmm. excellent. Um, so there's no right, right way to do this. I'm sure that somebody will say, yeah, for real. <laughs> but I'm going to just slice it down like this, and then I'm just going to go that way. Are you in the kitchen? No. 
we had ribs last night again, and they um, they were just like sharks. Also, it's because they were getting they got a lot of shrimp, shrimp tails, tails, so which is not as cool as shark tails. So you know, from a movie set, we look at just like that Piper is in her in her lap. Ah. That bacon feels good. Does smell good. This is uh, just uh, maple, uh, not maple, it's just brown sugar bacon this time. And I think I'm going to just do this recipe from now on because I think the maple syrup adds too much um, sugar content. And so when you're cooking it, it gets kind of a little weird. These are just starting to boil. You're going to want to watch your potatoes. And they, until they're fork tender, and it's about 10 or so minutes with the amount in here. I am going to have um, a stir just to sort of mix up the stuff because you've got two different types of potatoes. So I don't think that matters too much, but I'm taking this bacon further than you would if you were doing it in strips because I want it to be crispy. It, I want it to have the bacon -y flavor, but I also want it to have the crunch when you're adding it to the mashed potatoes and the uh, cabbage. So I've been using this cast iron a lot more because um, it's very well seasoned right now. And so you might as well use it because it's a very good conductor of heat, which with this countertop burner, I really wanted to use it because then the heat is going to be distributed oh, a lot yeah. more e uh, evenly. So. Make sure I don't lose my garlic. The one hundred, man. I miss. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't have a great tomato crop this year. No. No. I don't I really don't, care. Well, I do, but I like the. I like having the tomato. You know, the tomatoes from the. Denise, tomatoes. did you grow tomatoes this year? I didn't. I'm super sad because I always wait for that first ripe tomato. Well, and I may. I got an air. I got an heirloom be, uh, beef steak tomato out there that it seems to just it just didn't do anything and i don't know if it's the bed or what's going on but the, the it's you know it's a new bed so yeah. i don't know if that's the case or what but i also have a better you know i use tomato cages which i don't really want to do anymore so next year i've got some a little bit of minor construction to basically put some things over the over the back that you can put string on and it will hang down. To train them up that And way. then you can train it up. And I'm going to do that with uh, cucumbers and everything. And so I've got, I need a cattle or a, I need a grate for the pizza oven anyways. And so I have a metal cattle bar, a cattle gate on there. That's on the one I'm using. I'm going to take it off and then uh, rejigger it so that I can use it for this. So while this is getting very, very close, I'm going to finish cutting this and then get a plate. Um, I saw an interesting thing somebody did the other day with bacon. Um, they didn't want the bacon or whatever crispy thing that they made. Oh, it was that uh, they made a chicken cordon bleu. And they didn't want the chicken cordon bleu to sit on one side and get mushy. Um, and so they put, they just put chopsticks and let, set, let it sit on, pot, uh, on a plate with, and, with the chopsticks. And that way it gets air underneath it. And it doesn't get soggy, which ah. I thought was really a, a clever way of doing that. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So, anyways, I was thinking about like, you know you can do it with strips of bacon. Obviously, you're gonna have some issues if you try to do it with uh, <laughs> chunks. But anyways, that's just that pro tip that I saw that you should try if you're gonna do that. Um, and then, but I, I got me thinking about making a chicken port on blue. The dogs are very very good. So, okay, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to keep this food pitcher, but I want to get, um, where is it? I don't know. I'll just have to use something different. I'll just use this spatula. What do you want? I wanted a slotted spoon, but this will work. Because I don't, I don't want to take a ton of the oil with me here. This is, I, I mean, it does the same thing, right? I mean, it seems to be working. Yeah. 
The other thing to think about too is when you're taking this out of here, it's got hot oil on it still. So it'll continue to crisp like it is going. So I'm also going to turn down the oil a little bit once I get everything out of here. I'm going to actually pour some of it off. So you get to watch that hot and dangerous thing with this heavy pan. <laughs> we all love to watch that. Always so exciting. I'm going to set that there. Now on top of it. Where's our oh. bacon grease? Put it in the sink, maybe. Ooh! Look at the big brain on it. Yep. Hot pad. Big brain. <laughs> so let's see, you can see, like, it's the, when I get this out and put butter in there, it will, along with the, a little bit of this fat, it's going to. I'm actually just going to get most of it out of there and leave what's coating. And then when I add two tablespoons of this butter, not salted butter or unsalted, whatever you want to call it. So this takes seven tablespoons of butter all, all in all. We're just going to use the whole stick. Because it all, the rest of it just goes on top of the hot potatoes and everything and makes it basically a pool of butter. The potatoes have been boiling for 17 minutes, in case you're... 17? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let it down. 17? Really? I put a timer on. Wow. Um, almost there. Well, because we're making mats, it's okay to take these a little bit further than you want. But they're not... The fork is not... Or, yeah, the fork is not going all the way through. So, so the nice part about using two different fats is we're going to get the creaminess of the milk fats out of the butter, and the bacon is just going to add just boom flavor. Okay, so together they're just going to be like yum yum yum. How's that? Again? They're going to add like a, they're going to add this yum yum yum. <laughs> you know what? I think it is a <laughs> description of what is happening here. Yeah. So these are gonna we're gonna let these go a little bit and then then we'll go from there. And then you'll add the garlic. Yeah. I do not again don't add your garlic at the beginning of your cook unless your onions are not softening to like translucent. Because if you do, there you're gonna end up with burnt pieces of garlic, which nobody wants. No. Oh man. I gotta take the the cast iron that Denise you brought over and I need to clean it, salt with water, and then season the hell out of it. But there's a very nice Dutch oven in there that is I'm very excited about. So okay. Done that. I'm adding the cabbage after the onion and then adding the gar I'm gonna and then we'll add the garlic sort towards the end of that. That will pump it up. Um, and then once that's done, we'll get a colander for this and mash away. Okay. So, I mean, some people would say, these are just fancy mashed potatoes. No, they're simple. Adding ingredients that are on hand. So again, you're, if you've got some, if you, if you planted a spring crop of potatoes, and then you pulled those and you planted a summer crop that's coming up now, your cabbage is gonna to start to come up now because you planted it in summer as well. You've got enough, um, you know, you've got things that you need to cook with. That's the, the fun part of this, like kind of doing it the way you do it. Colander, let me rinse this down a little bit. Just a teeny tiny bit of bacon powder out of here. Ooh, what else? What do we got coming up? I mean, what are you going to do over winter break or uh, uh, fall break? Well, hang out. I'm currently participating in a book study. I'm going to be teaching 
two or facilitating two online blended learning classes starting Monday and Tuesday this week. And I am designing a third blended learning course that I got approval to start after the break. So I'm going to be busy with those things. I guess so. So much for a vacation. Well, we weren't going anywhere, so yep. I got to finish painting the tile here. True that. And next week? Not this coming week, but the week after. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's fun. So we're cooking. Again, I'm not taking these fully translucent. I think they're good where they're at right now. And I'm going to add this. And so we're, the, the thing about this is they're going to release liquid because that's what any kind of sort of leafy thing is going to do. Um, so you can put it all in there and mix it up and get all of that oil and uh, butter mixed together into the, on the leaves. And they're going to start to crisp up. Now, we've done something with cabbage like this where we crisped it up. I can't remember the dish or what the episode is. So if somebody from the, uh, you know, the side dish historical preservation society <laughs> uh, wants to tell me what episode that was, then I will uh, I'll reward you with a nice virtual high five, which is a big deal if you know. So, Also, uh, the new Hocus Pocus comes out soon, so I'll have to watch that several times. Uh, that's, yeah. And a lot of you. I just emailed that. Marie Calendars. Rebecca from Ted Lasso. Yeah. I love her. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about this experience. So, Carmen and I went to Safeway the other night. And again, you know, we were looking for Amy wanted egg rolls, and we were getting stuff to make. You were getting sushi. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Grocery store sushi. Okay. Which don't hit on it. It's actually pretty good if you try it. Yeah. I've never gotten sick from it. So, sure. uh, and yeah. So, anyways, uh, we're looking and we're in the frozen food section getting looking for the egg rolls, which that was an adventure in and of itself. But, anyways, <laughs> they had cauliflower crust pot pies for Marie Calendars. And so, Marie Calendars, if you see this, but it's they're still made with wheat. There's like contains wheat in it. And it would seem to me that if you're making a cauliflower crusted pot pie, that your part of your target audience would maybe be the gluten free crow. Because, you know, Carmen is gluten free, as you all know. And we finding alternatives for, you know, popular food items, especially things that you can get in a grocery store. I mean, we were super excited. We found Kraft macaroni and cheese that is gluten free, you know? So, the experience can be very, very similar. But when you go and you see it, the look on her face, she was so excited, like, I'm going to get to have an actual Marie Calendar pot pie, only to be ultimately disappointed. And, you know, it was, so she's, she called the helpline when we got home, and now she's been uh, emailing them and texting them, or whatever, I don't know, whatever. She's been on, she's been on the case. Okay. So while this is going to do that, I don't want to, I'm going to leave it alone and I'm going to actually turn the heat up a teeny tiny bit because I want it to start to crisp up and get that browning on the edges. Okay. 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 The heavy thing? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to throw, we're just going to mix everything in this bowl. I only need half a cup. If not, we can supplement with some whole milk. Just do what we have to do. Okay. <laughs> just. This is, you do not want these to be open, super smooth. Like That's why you're not rising? Yeah. You want it to have the... So it's more like when I make twice baked potatoes, that yeah. texture? Coarseness is not the right... Chunk? Yeah. Chunk. chunk. Yeah, I guess chunk would be better than, than that, so... Rustic. Yeah. 
There you go. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Uh, you can, if you, did you know that you can store mashed potatoes, if cool, in a Ziploc freezer bag for up to three months? I Yeah, so if you wanted it, you can, you can make your own pre-made mashed potatoes and just freeze them. And then when you take them out to thaw them, make sure they're in a, you know, fine mesh colander or something so that the excess liquid that from the ice that forms gets drained out a little bit. Huh. So, okay, that's pretty good. So you should have little pieces of, of chunks and, and, but that's, I like the way that looks. Um, okay. Turn page. Should we make, should we make a cocktail while this is doing its thing? Yeah. Okay. Carmen is not impressed by the, the Almirado whiskey salad today. No. Okay, so we're going to do a dry shake first on this. Does everybody know what a dry shake is? Okay. Yeah. We're going to add everything to this, including the egg white, and we're going to shake it together so that it, it, it basically emulsifies together and comes together in, in one piece. But I don't want to add the, the ice to it because it will kind of break it up and it won't, it won't help with the emulsification because of the water. Okay. Okay. So get your DeSerona. And you want one ounce of this. Only the best. We're looking forward to this. I was going to um, just keep it simple and do three fingers of Jameson. <laughs> but then I thought, well, maybe somebody else would want to try this uh, or try something. So I've got this black barrel of uh, Jameson, which is triple distilled. It's You're great. making Lino crazy right now. Why? Because you know it's pronounced Jameson. No, I don't. <laughs> Everybody else calls it that. Not the people that make it. No. Sorry, Jameson. I'm pretty sure I've seen commercials where it's called, where the man's name is John Jameson. 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 That's what I said. Oh. As you can see, this is pretty popular around here. <laughs> that, sure that one's not mine. <laughs> I'll underpour. Don't worry. You need two ounces of this. And then I've got lemon juice, simple syrup, which the sour and the sour, it's sweet. Sweet and sour. And so I've got one ounce of this, which is the lemon juice. Uh, these are cheap. Go buy yourself about 12 of them because they are, when you're making cocktails like this. Or any kind of sauce or anything. Yeah. I love it. And then I'm a half. I switch spots. So this is a half teaspoon of simple syrup. If you want more, then use more. But we're just going to keep it to the recipe for now. Because the Jameson Irish whiskey is going to be a little bit sweeter. The Amor, or the De Sorono is going to also cause it to be a little bit sweet. And here's your egg yolk. Uh, these, are, these are at uh, room temperature. So... Use your glove, Tatum. I know. I know people out there are just like, what is happening right We now? don't have an egg separator, do we? I got I got two of them. Well, we used to have the, the little whisk thing looking thing. <laughs> Waste not, want not. That's right. You can. Okay, we're starting to get on this. You can start to see oh, yeah, yeah. browning up. And you think to yourself, that is counterintuitive. But that's it. That's that's hot. That's real hot on my flip flop foot. That was exciting. Good. This is why I'm leaving it alone and only turning it every once in a while. Okay. So now for the dry shake, and you just want to put this in there, and then <laughs> what? Denise said she had the dry shake sweats. So you want to do this? Not like that. There we go. Yeah. 15 seconds, because you want it to really. I don't like his face when he does that. 
I'm trying not to fall over because my guts hurt. <laughs> Oh, okay. This is very provocative. This is like almost like a shake weight, but we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're going to add ice. Did it emulsify? It looks pretty good. It smells really good. It really smells good, too. And you're going to see the foam. You got to have that foam. And you can only get that from really from having the egg white in there. Okay. Add the ice and then shake it for 30 seconds. Who made this? A masochist or a sadist? I don't know which one it is, but whoever it is, sadist. There we go. Really? Nope, just getting cold. By design. I don't know how it's a golf tournament. Oh, it was fine. I, I golfed a one on one today. Did you have fun? I always have fun. I had to be I had to be co in charge today, so. In Dayton Valley? In Dayton I don't think Valley. that was 30 seconds. It wasn't. My arms were tired. <laughs> you may not get to the second one. Right? Uh. No. Stop, <laughs> That's what you get. It's nice and cold. Okay. Give me this. <laughs> crazy. A crazy person. There's not going to be any room for that cherry. Oh, there's going to be plenty of room. Don't you don't worry. Better have a sip. Oh, you got it. Okay. The foam on the top is really pretty. I love it. So, start again. What do you think, it's, it's, not, it's not terrible. It's, it's never not a really ringing good. endorsement, but you know. No, it's good. I, I would drink one, but not today. Okay. This is about where I want it to be. It's it's got some browning on the edges, but it's not over. So let's add the garlic real quick and then well that's blooming. That's good. Oh yeah? Yeah. What do you think it tastes like overall? Like it, do, does the amaretto come through really well? Thank you. No. Lemony amaretto, it's, it's good. Tastes like all the things that are in it. Well, there you go. Rousing success. It's kind of dry. Do you think it needs more simple syrup? No. No, it's sweet enough. It's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. What's happening right now? Carmen has a cat hooked on her feet, and she's doing, like, leg gym exercises, <laughs> and the cat was hanging there. She's happy enough to do it. Uh, I'm turning this off because there's enough residual heat here to let the, the garlic come and Oh, yeah, it, it smells good. So. Onions and garlic, can't beat it. Okay. That's not going to get overly hot. And unlike me, who's always overly hot. Yep. It's just free. Did you say I'm weird? I said I disagree. Okay. It might be weird if you thought he was yeah. overly hot. Yeah. yeah. Well, so you could use a bourbon or a, a rye whiskey this, with this. I think that using Jameson. Um, or any kind of <laughs> they're giggling on the other side because <laughs> I can just see Lena going twitching <laughs> or cringing I don't do it to make fresh it squeezed lemon juice what's the name of this one it's an amaretto whiskey sour get away from there Stupid fly. It's 
fly season or something. It's irritating. They're trying to find homes for the fall winter. Just die. Just die. I hope you die already. They didn't know you were getting a little ahead of some heart today. Yeah. Never a great sound. Okay. Flies are actually helpful to the environment. They attack caterpillars, grasshoppers, and other insects that eat our food plants. They're still disgusting, and I hate them. That's also true. It's like this thing. Maybe you need a different shaker. Oh, I got it. You're too heavy. <laughs> Are you counting? Yep. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's 15. It's going to be the internet. You can't take things out of the internet, truly. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it would be an honor to be a meme. Oh. It would be Ooh, torture Ooh. for me. Ooh. Look at how it's separated. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That's really that that's so I'll I'll show it. Yeah, it has the foam on the top. Right. That's the what a whiskey part. What a fizzy, you know, or a whiskey sour fizz like that is gonna do. So. Okay. Well, that give me strength. Are you trying not to laugh over there or trying not to look at me doing this? <laughs> yes. No, she lies. Keep going. I counted to 30. You just want to keep watching me do it. <laughs> this is the love of my life, people. Giving me ultimate shit, which is what happened. <laughs> I'm push it to the limit. Take it. Nope. Nope. I don't want to fight Don Henley. I mean, he's an old man, so. Oh, send our beat up an old man. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but the old man chose yeah, to be in the fight. He, did. he signed up for it. Okay, so I'm going to just set mine to the side real quick so it can, it'll go the way it's supposed to look and then we'll have a drink. But we need to finish the food. Oh, it's separating already. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh my God, everybody. Now we're going to just add basically everything to the pot, mix it up. And to present the best part, I'm going to chunk some of this butter out, add the bacon, and uh, then add the, mix this together and add all of that butter to the pot to the top in a pool. What are you looking at? What are you guys looking at? Over there? It's like a tiny boat. What is a tiny so it kind boat? of acts like a jet ski, but you're in the like little tiny boat. I need like five of those. <laughs> Seems like dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. Is this how you serve this? It's it. Do, it's not a casserole. It doesn't go in the nope. oven. Nope. You bet, yeah. So basically, it says. Um, mashed potatoes and masher, gently stir in the cabbage mixture. Add half a chopped bacon, season with salt. Whoops. Add half the chopped bacon. It's fine. You'd probably just sprinkle it on the top. So here, I got some for you. <laughs> cool. That's cool. Tomorrow you can make patties out of it and fry it for oh. breakfast. Yeah. You mean you can? You can come over and do that. You're going thrifty with that. <laughs> so when I pick you up, mine better be ready. <laughs> So you want a good mix here. Oh, when did I supposed to add the cream? 
didn't say. Now, now. <laughs> it literally doesn't say. Did you warm it a little in the microwave first? Nah. Not gonna curl. He's living on the edge. Oh, I just meant to tell you, cool your taters. Oh, they're yeah, pretty they're, hot. They're, they're plenty hot. This is a quarter, a uh, half. Oh, this is a half cup. How much is left in the carton? Not very much. Just put it in. Listen, everybody. <laughs> Kill the lily. I think you have a few more potatoes in there than the recipe called for because I think. I don't know how to estimate. I think your math was off on the Yukons. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Oh, wow. Look at that. So. I don't think you need to salt it. In. Well, you should taste first I because will. of the bacon. Yeah, I'm going to do that. But I'm going to salt and pepper it. I'm going to pepper it. Does it say to pepper it? It does. It says to season with salt and pepper to taste. But you haven't tasted it yet. Yeah. I'm going to salt and pepper it now and then see if I need to add more. <laughs> you are going to salt it? Nope. But I'm going to pepper it. Stop! It's not very much. Are you your mother? Yes. I'm turning into her, as we all know. This is no. This is not news. Okay. Now you're supposed to make a good well here in the middle. This is where running out of space on a giant countertop comes into play. Let's have this. Oh, I want to show you this. Yeah, we've seen. How pretty that is. Ooh, that's yeah. that's dangerously good. That's I a really fall out of your chair. Drink. I really enjoy that quite a bit. Um, quite a bit. All right. So the rest of this, like I said, I don't think leaving one tablespoon of butter um, is. You're supposed to put the rest of that stick of butter in there? Well, you're supposed to put seven tablespoons total. Whoa. So that seems like too much. Again. It is, but. I think that's a, the appropriate amount of potatoes. But we've talked, we, <laughs> yeah, right. we, have ta we have talked about potatoes are going to take this fat off. They're not going to. I mean, we put literally almost a whole jug like of that cream in the mashed potatoes we make for, for Thanksgiving. So these will start to butter the biscuit, as they say. Potato, whatever. And some of this delightful crispy, salty bacon, This is probably why you don't need to salt it very much. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So, take a spoon. Make sure you get over here in this crispy, <laughs> bacony, cabbagey, buttery spot. Get some more of that. Hair out of my mouth. It's like, Mashed potatoes, but up a notch. Yeah, because you get a vegetal, but it's fried. Cooking it in the bacon fat with the butter. That's a A plus idea I had. And then, um, yeah, I think you're gonna like this. Here, you want to have a little bite now. Garlicky? Is it garlicky? Not really. Could you have more garlic? I think you could. I don't think you necessarily need to. Two cloves of garlic isn't that much for that much potato. No. You tell me what you think. Thank you. Yeah. Is that hot? No, not really. I mean, it's warm. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, go out and buy, you know, some cabbage today. And mm. That's really good. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of it, so we can uh, have it with our brats. Yeah. We yeah. did it. 7.59. It's almost like I know what time it is. I don't, believe me. When I get to this point, I don't know what time it is. Okay, so... Uh, it's been requested that I make Turkish Delight next week. So that's what we're doing. Right. If you have a recipe for Turkish Delight that you like, 
send it to us at sidedishcooking at gmail.com. Remember to like and subscribe. Go down and like this video right now. Do it. If you didn't like last week's video, go and do that. Um, two weeks, I will not be here live. We will have a pre-recorded uh, episode because I will be at uh, a golf camp. And I may, we'll probably record some of the shenanigans of me cooking because the last time I did it, I ended up being like a line cook making tacos at midnight for a bunch of drunk dudes. And <laughs> so maybe I can take some of that and make a short out of it and we can put our first short up. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. You should definitely make this. It's, it's very simple overall. just takes a little bit of time. Um, it's hearty. It's going to taste really good in your belly. Also, make an amaretto whiskey sour. And uh, we love you so much for stopping by. Remember, just be kind, be loyal, and do something nice for somebody next week. Um, it is the season. So we love you. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.